Hey everybody, a couple months ago in response to my daytime ISS capture video, which was a ton of fun, you should watch that. Uh, in response to that, Alexis 8471 asked the question as to whether I could see or he could see uh, this star Sirius during the day. Now I think I know the answer to that because Sirius is brighter than uh, some of the other objects I've caught during the day. But it made me wonder exactly how many astronomical objects could I see during the day? So before we go further into this, you kind of need to understand what magnitude is. So uh, magnitude is a way that we describe the brightness of celestial objects uh, as seen from Earth. And as you go higher on the magnitude scale, the object gets dimmer. And it happens that each step up the magnitude scale is about a factor of two and a half. So a magnitude two star is two and a half times dimmer than a magnitude one star. Or a magnitude one star is two and a half times brighter than a magnitude two star. And magnitudes can be negative, which are very bright, which we're gonna look at a couple negative magnitude objects today, hopefully, up to a positive number. And this is where the question is, how high up the magnitude scale, how dim can I get, uh, before I can no longer see the object? So I've got all of the stars that are visible, uh, so to speak, or at least all of the stars that are in the sky right now in a spreadsheet sheet and I'm gonna just work my way down those uh, stars or objects because there are a couple planets on that list and see how far I can go down before I can no longer see the object. So we're gonna start out today with the Sun, the brightest star in the sky, and then we're going to go to the next brightest object which is Venus and then we're gonna go to Jupiter and then we're going to try to catch Mercury. I've never tried to do Mercury in the day but in theory it's the th fourth brightest object in the, in the sky right now. The moon isn't out. And then after I get Mercury, then I'm gonna to start to go down the star list. And I'm gonna start with a zero magnitude star and then go one, two, etc. So one of the things about daytime astronomy is it's really hard to see what you're looking at because the glare off your computer screen can be really excessive. So I'm gonna do the majority of this work from inside the uh, garage here. And I'm gonna string a USB cable out to my telescope that I'm gonna set up here in the driveway. Okay, I'm set up here in the garage. I got a rough alignment on the telescope so it can kind of go places, at least as a starting point. Uh, so let's start out with the brightest star uh, in the sky right now, which is the sun. And while it's zipping over there, I'll remind you I do have a sun filter over my telescope. Never do any of this stuff without that filter. All right, and there we are. There's the sun and you can see some sunspots. Uh, the air is kind of disturbed today, I'll say. The seeing is not great, so we're gonna have a tough time getting focus on, s on the objects. But the, day, the goal today is not to get great pictures, it's just to see how high on a magnitude scale we can go. I might take one shot here of the sun if I can find some nice sunspots. Yeah, the air is really not cooperating today. This is going to be kind of a blurry picture, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture here. Okay, now that we got the sun, uh, let's go to the second brightest object in the sky right now. That second brightest object is Venus, and I need to jump in here real quick and tell you guys something. When I first did this garage part, I had a catastrophic technology failure. I lost all of my video, all of my screen capture footage. So everything you see in the garage was done a week after I did that intro. So unfortunately in that week's time, Venus and Mercury got way too close to the sun for me to even try to capture uh, on this day. But I do wanna share those pictures that I got from the previous week that I lost the majority of the, of the data for uh, because I think they're super cool. And it was my first daytime Mercury, so I wanna share that. And so what you're seeing here is the view through my telescope last week of Venus. And at the time, it was a magnitude negative 4.5, so super bright. And uh, this is the daytime still shot I got from that. I think it's incredible that we can get these kind of pictures in the daytime. Uh, and just so I don't have to bust in here again, I'm going to show you Mercury right away. Uh, this was a magnitude zero last week. Again, I couldn't look at it this week. Uh, so it was still pretty bright at magnitude zero, uh, but I was skeptical I'd be able to see much of it because it was really close to the sun last week. Uh, but in the still shot, you can see how it's uh, only half illuminated. So it's a uh, kind of a phase of Mercury, which is pretty cool. Uh, super happy with it. First daytime Mercury. 
So uh, I'm gonna send you back to the garage now for the next brightest object, which is Jupiter. Okay, Jupiter is so low right now that we're shooting through some trees actually, uh, but they don't have any leaves on them, so we should be okay. Let me find it. There it is. Wow, that was really quick and easy. And you can see it's super bright, right? So a negative two object is super bright. I think it's too low in the sky to resolve the rings, or the, sorry, the, the bands or anything, but let's just take a closer look at it. Uh, and we'll go to, maybe we'll go to this again later uh, when it gets a little higher. So that is Jupiter. It's, uh, it's so low in the sky and there's such poor seeing right now that we're just not gonna be able to resolve any details, but we, we saw it. So we can see a negative two, uh, a negative two magnitude. So let's go to one of these zero magnitude stars. It'll be the first time uh, we've gone to a star here other than the sun. And let's just validate that uh, we can see stars in the middle of the day. Okay, the scope tried to go to Vega. You can see it's not in the field of view. It rarely gets things perfect, so this is where I start doing a grid search. Oh, there it is. It's at the top. Okay, that's a magnitude zero star. Very bright. And you can see how variable the brightness of that is. That's just that poor seeing I'm talking about. <sighs> Boy, that doesn't bode well for trying to see things fainter than this, but we'll see what we can do. All right, we're gonna go to Deneb next. Uh, it's 1.25 and it's just above where Vega was. So it uh, should be uh, far enough away from the sun to be safe here. Okay, two and a half times dimmer than Vega. Uh, so it could be a challenge, but we'll take a look at it here. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> the alignment on this thing is really good. You can see it right there. So, okay, check that one off. 1.125, so we'll call that a magnitude one success. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let's go find a magnitude two. Okay, the telescope is supposedly pointed where it thinks Hamal is. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, there it is. There it is, epic. Okay, uh, all right, so we'll put it right in the middle here for you. Oh, uh, I got this thing on a very high rate of speed moving around, so it's hard to get it, but, uh, or get it solid. There it is right there, so that's Hamal. Uh, that is a magnitude two star. Nice, okay, now we're getting into the serious numbers of stars uh, once we go, get up to magnitude threes. Uh, magnitude two stars, so there's 17 in the sky right now uh, that are magnitude two or above. So uh, we're already getting fairly high on the count, but let's jump down to magnitude three stars. Okay, next up we're gonna go to this star Maz. Uh, it was called Almaz in my spreadsheet, uh, but it's a three magnitude, 2.99. So we're gonna go here next. Oh, it's right there, oh my gosh. Okay, I didn't even have to go anywhere. It's right here, you can see it. It's drifting a little bit as the telescope drifts, uh, but we can definitely see it and it should stabilize here in a second. This is, we're getting to the edge of what we're able to find. So we saw Maz, uh, that got so faint that I think I'm gonna go to a 3.5 next because I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get to a four. Okay, we're gonna go to this star Rana. It's uh, far enough away from the sun. I don't have to worry about that. Uh, and it's a 3.5, so nice and faint. Okay, we are pointed at Rana. That's a 3.5. Uh, the colors are a little messed up uh, because I was messing with them for increased visibility. We'll start a little grid search here. Oh, there, wait, I just saw something. I need to, there it is. Wait, there it is. It's right here. I need to get this uh, reticule off. Oh my gosh, it's right there. Get out of there. 
Wow, that is dim. 3.5 right there. That has got to be about the limit in the middle of the day. I'm gonna go try to find a four, but that is really faint. Yeah, there it stopped, the drift stopped. It's right there. <laughs> so there's one right next to it. I'm not even gonna look at my database. That's a 4.04. .04. Uh, it's just right over there. And since we had good luck with this one, uh, we're gonna give this one a shot. HR 1298. Not sure what the real name of it is, but it's a four. All right, magnitude four. All right, I've spent about 10 minutes trying to find that uh, magnitude four star and I cannot do it. So I'm gonna say that the threshold is somewhere between 3.5 and four, uh, probably pretty close to 3.5. Okay, sorry about the abrupt cut here, but we need to wrap this up. I wanted to do this whole video in five minutes and the director's cut here is uh, getting a little bit long. So let's answer the question. How many stars can we see in the middle of the day with a small telescope? Uh, here's the count of how many were visible to me by magnitude today, and I'm taking the planets out because they come and go. And according to this table, we got to 3.5, so our answer today is about 120 stars. But this is not the final answer, because the poor visibility played a larger role than I thought it would. Check this video out. In my work from last week, when I shot this, under much clearer skies, this is the time when I lost all my footage, uh, so I had to redo it today. Uh, I still got this amazing footage of Jupiter, and if you stare at this video long enough, you will start to see a dot or two up above Jupiter, uh, where Jupiter's moons Europa and Io are. And they are magnitude 6. Even if you can't see them in this live view, you can probably make them out uh, from this processed image uh, that I made from the video. And even further, if you can't see them there, if I put a polarizing filter on my telescope, which I did here, it darkens the sky enough to really make out these magnitude 6 objects. And it's extremely apparent once I process the image. So really the final answer to our question today is it depends. In even poor conditions, we can find about 120 objects in the sky. When viewing improved, that number probably goes up to around 700. And if you can put a polarizing filter on your telescope, we're probably closer to 2000, especially if you have the opportunity to post-process the image uh, to, to really bring out some finer details. So for rough orders of magnitude, I'm saying we got 100, 100 stars on a bad day, a thousand or more stars uh, on a really clear, calm day. So I appreciate you guys for coming along on this ride with me. This was a tough one, lots of eye strain, really painful to have to do it twice, but had fun doing it. Uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and I'll see you next time. Could I see during the day? Car going by, and then we'll try to go. Oh. Car. Hello. What you're looking at? So, f car going by. <sighs> Fuck. Eek. That looks like it's pointed at the sun. Let's make sure it's not. Oh my gosh. It's gonna go by the sun. <laughs>